Well, this piece is called Source Dublin, and it's uh, based on a piece that I originally did in Washington, D.C. Um, in Dublin, I'll have out over 200 water containers uh, where visitors to the Science Gallery will be able to collect water from commercial or residential taps. They'll bring it back to the Science Gallery and leave it in this field of water that you see around. In December, I'll come back and I'll do a performance where I will uh, fill the water uh, fountain behind me that purifies water continuously. I'll fill it uh, by transporting the water from the ground into the fountain. Meanwhile, the locations that the water uh, is going to be collected from is being mapped on a map, so visitors can also see where all the small sources of water are coming uh, to be combined into this larger source. So we've tried to make a whole flowchart, really, with no pun intended, that interconnects all of these issues from privatization to site-specific issues about water futures in Ireland and the watershed in, for Dublin, as well as just general climate change and, and politics of water. Optic oil is what the artist calls it. You can see why it's got that name because it, uh, it has very interesting uh, effects when you look through it. So it distorts your, your, view, uh, your view through the vessel. It acts like water, but it's more viscous, so it enables him to make this whirlpool in the, uh, in the vessel. And I think it's, it's just engaging on a very basic level with uh, people's fascination with water. It's a very magical material, and so people have been uh, really interested in this uh, work. The Water Lab is, um, you know, for people to take away the idea about, you know, when they're actually sort of drinking water from their tap, that they actually just think about, first of all, where it's coming from, what's in that water, um, you know, what, you know, has it been treated? It's, it's, and it's like a reminder for people. So looking at sort of the constituents and both the contaminants in different types of water. This piece is called the pouch and I uh, wanted to do some kind of uh, a carafe made of silicone, so that is actually a soft carafe that is inspired by the cow udder. Uh, what I want is to create actually a new behavior around water and uh, actually create a new vocabulary about objects. By means of a white laser which traverses uh, water in which electrolysis is taking place, where you can see uh, water splitting up into its components of uh, hydrogen and oxygen, uh, all of a sudden this tremendous chromatic depth perception is uh, created. The, each and every micro bubble of hydrogen behaves like a lens. We wanted to create a very direct experience uh, with uh, hydrogen because it is such a fine element, so delicate, and you can see it in the behavior of the bubbles, and sometimes they are very, very fine, and they come in these uh, very perfect lines, and without the laser, you just see them as dust. You will not see them as bubbles. This piece is called Prote. Um, this is a small one meter version of a larger boat that we built this summer. The concept is a articulated hull sailboat that sails upstream, remote control or semi-autonomously. It tows a long oil boom that drags upwind and absorbs oil off the top of water near oil spill sites. The project is dealing with the virtual water in materials, so looking at how much water goes into making the objects that we have within our lives. Each stopper is made out of a different material, and each of the vessels holds the amount of water that would theoretically go, in it, go into making that stopper. It's a visualization of, of water needs of the future. In 2030, there's increased urbanization and increased populations. And we've looked at how that's going to affect each different country and which countries are going to need the most investment in new water infrastructure. So the hydrocordion um, is an instrument that uses air and water to change the frequency of sound. So a little bit like mimicking an organ, a traditional organ, you have these air slippers down here which push air through these tubes here 
up into the columns so that they activate the flute sound. Simultaneously, these water bellies that you see, um, they can be worn around the neck and then squeezed a little bit like an um, accordion. And that pushes, it propels water into these tubes and changes the height of the water and ultimately the frequency of the sound. So you can go up and down in scale.